This man is using clapping to describe a six-year-old child alone in a department store while her mother is distracted using a mobile telephone. Other paedophiles in the area can now take advantage of this child by using this method of communication. Today's film is The Nostril Picker, originally titled as The Changer, made in 1988, not securing a release until 1993, which always sounds promising, a delayed release, and is directed by Mark Nowicki. And boy, were they right. A young, sexually frustrated man is taught a chant which allows him to change sex at will. He uses his newfound powers to kill teenage girls. That's it. From the retitling and cover art, I was expecting something more Troma-esque and not the in-house productions. You know what I mean. Tasteless, cheap, tedious beyond all human capacity. Well, at least I got two of those right. What I got instead was a pitch black horror comedy with surprisingly tight pacing and a surprising lack of shower scenes given the premise. Carl Schurgering gives a great central performance as Joe Bukowski, one of the 80s many released mental patients who has a backstory straight out of a campfire horror story. Such obvious framing solidifies this as a more slasher affair rather than a quirky serial killer movie, which I don't think were a bunch of words that were ever meant to be put in that order in the first place. What you get from The Nostril Picker is a vibe you can only get from a true American independent film. The premise is asinine, yet is given a curious amount of TLC. The tone fits the time period and is about as misanthropically humorous as any horror genre film from an era of franchise fatigue can get. And finally, what would a post-Nightmare on Elm Street pre-Scream slasher movie be without half ass in it and then pretending to be a lampooning of the genre? Now, as much as I love a psychotic character performed with skill and conviction, which you do get here in The Nostril Picker, what I really, really don't like is a film that covers its tonal indecisions with sardonic whimsy. This was a cinematic condition really specific to the horror films of the early 1990s. It came from an amalgamation of a formula equals box office mentality from distributors, a downsized American independent film scene, and a society caught in a whirlwind of moral hysteria and economic disenfranchisement. Why bother being scary when the real horror is outside and all that shit? Why don't we just laugh at another statutory rapist with a funny accent and a grandpa-like temperament? Well, maybe because it really wasn't all that funny to begin with. Something which I unfortunately think the guys who made the nostril picker would have disagreed with at the time. Combine this with the bare bones police procedural narrative and what you get is a sandwich with thin cut bread and a bland filling. In conclusion, I would have a hard time recommending a nostril picker. At times it really impresses, but for the majority it is just a very early 90s serial killer film with a knowingly weird premise and zero desire to do anything else but see that premise towards the most logical conclusion possible and hopefully create another Freddy Krueger in the process. Sorry, it didn't work out like that. I can't find much fault with the film technically. It is a well put together independent horror film, but its lack of commitment to any given tone makes for a way too frustrating viewing experience and I can't imagine myself seeing this one again anytime soon. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Tomorrow's film is Varsity Blood.